Good evening and welcome to presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary Parish as we celebrate the Solemnity of All Saints. If you're visiting today, we welcome you and invite you to worship with us again. During Mass, we invite you to listen to the words of the songs and allow them to lift you into prayer. Please rise as you are able. Sing with all the saints in glory, sing the resurrection song, death and sorrow, a dark story, to the former days belong. All around the clouds are breaking, soon the storms of time shall cease. In God's likeness we awaken, knowing everlasting peace. Oh, what glory far exceeding all that I has yet perceived. Holiest hearts for ages pleading, never that full joy. Conceived. God has promised, Christ prepares it. There on high our welcome waits. Every humble spirit shares it. Christ has passed the eternal gates. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Or, as we as Christians call it, All Hallows Eve. And so, as with my dear brothers and sisters, we come together to celebrate these sacred mysteries for all of our saints um, and celebrating with them. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Amen. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration, the merits of all the saints. Bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels, who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard a number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiping God and exclaiming, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Blessings from the Lord shall he receive, and right reward from the God who saves him. Such are the people who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, See what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. What we do, we do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has his hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Today is kind of a special weekend for a lot of reasons. If you've been following the news, it's not just because tonight will be a rare blue moon. The first on October 31st since 1944. So it's the second full moon in the month of October. A rare thing, first of all, but even more rare because it occurs on this night. And it's not because, necessarily because um, it's a Halloween during COVID and we have to take all kinds of strange precautions, although that is true too. It's not because this is a Sunday celebration, a solemnity that trumps the Sunday, the usual Sunday of ordinary time, although that is true also. Why is it so special? It's because each year we get to celebrate this time. It's actually called All Hallow Tide. These two days where beginning with evening prayer tonight and ending with evening prayer on October 2nd or November 2nd, we think about the church as a whole. We think about the church triumphant, the saints in heaven on All Saints Day, which we celebrate today. We think of the souls in purgatory, the church penitent, as they are purified of the consequences of their sins and look forward to the day when they will be in the fullness of heaven with the Lord. And we here, the church militant here on earth, still in the fight, still on the road to heaven, unite ourselves with the church as a whole and celebrate uniquely this mystical body of Christ which we belong to. This is a special weekend. And our readings highlight that. They speak of heaven in a particularly wonderfully way. From the book of Revelation, we're given two of the visions of John that he has during this amazing book that tells us the future of our fate, the future that God has planned for us. And in this first version, vision, we hear that God is going to protect us that he has marked 144,000 people with the seal that will keep them from suffering the consequences of the disasters that are going to happen in the world. Many denominations have keyed in on this 144,000 and built a whole theology around them. But we see them as somewhat symbolic. Twelve tribes of Israel, the Old Testament. Twelve apostles the New Testament foundation of the people of God. So the chosen people in the Old Testament and the chosen people in the New Testament unite as a multiplier. And that thousand-fold increase means that it's a huge number. We are part of that number because we have received the seal of God at our baptism when the priest, deacon, and parents crossed our foreheads 
and says, I claim you for Christ our Savior. We have received that seal. And if you go back into Ezekiel, I believe it is, you'll find that same seal, that cross on the forehead in the Old Testament that preserved people from all harm. God is here to protect us and see us through anything that we experience in our daily lives. So we see that first vision encouraging us that God is going to care for us and walk us through the trials and tribulations of our earthly life. And then John sets before us the wonderful vision of what heaven's going to be like. In 1 John, it says that we don't know what it's going to be like. And Paul says that too, that eye has not seen nor has ear heard what God has pre prepared for those who love him. And in John, he says also that we do not know what has been revealed yet about what heaven is like. But John gives us a foretaste of that. He says that people will be included from every tribe and nation, every tongue and language, all people of the earth. That's inclusive. We are Catholic with a small c. We are universal. And God has chosen people from everywhere and every time to be part of his mystical body, the church. God has blessed us with that. And one day we're going to be standing in his presence, clothed with our white robes, symbol that we get another symbol from our baptism. The forgiveness that God has gifted us, the grace that he's given us to make us right with him once again, to forgive the sins that we have committed, both original and particular and bring us back into that loving relationship with him that John talks about as well, what he says, beloved, how wonderful it is and how great it is that we can be called God's children and yet that is what we are. So today we unite ourselves with the, uh, the church of the future, those in heaven, we look forward to that day. We hold them up in veneration. We honor them with the, our presence here today. And yet, one of the very cool things I think about uh, the church itself is that um, during the a funeral vigil uh, celebration, the priest or deacon will open with these words. They say, my brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us together as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. They do not unravel with death. So as we sit here in this beautiful church, assembled here and at home to worship, we unite ourselves with those in heaven and we remember that we are one body, one church, one people graced with forgiveness and standing in the presence of God. That points to the future reality when someday we will join them. But today we also are told how to live that life. God has blessed the saints with the beatific vision standing in his presence, worshiping him day and night, knowing him for who he is and seeing him as he is. We here on earth are still traveling on that road. We look to them for role models and examples of holy living to encourage us in our daily lives, to ask them to pray for us because that bond is not broken with death we can go to them and ask them to hold us up in prayer as we can unite ourselves in prayer with them as too. The gospel today gives us the way in which we can live our lives today so that we know we are on that road by the Beatitudes that Jesus gives us 
his new commandments to live a life of holiness and virtue here on earth, a life to follow. We are to be meek. We are to be poor in spirit. We are to hunger and thirst for righteousness. We are to be merciful. We are to be pure of heart. We are to be peacemakers. All wonderful goals to examine our lives as they are now and ask ourselves, how could I do this better? How could I be a better Christian, a better disciple? How can I follow the path that the saints have walked before me better each day? How can I be a better peacemaker? How can I hunger and thirst for righteousness? How can I be merciful and show mercy in my daily life? And if I mourn, and if I am persecuted for loving righteousness, and if I am insulted and persecuted because I am a disciple of Christ, then I know, like the saints, that one day I will be united with him in the kingdom of God forever. And so today, we celebrate the kingdom that is now and not yet. The now is here. The not yet is in heaven, which we look forward to one day with our saints in heaven. We ask them, by the example of their lives, to show us the way here on earth that we can live in this time in this place and emulate their faith and their love for God so that one day we too will be united with them and standing next to them in the throng of believers in our white robes cleansed with the blood of the Lamb and praising God with them. We truly do believe in the communion of saints. We ask them to pray for us and help us on our way. We come together before our Heavenly Father to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnated to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing how much our Heavenly Father loves us and desires us to come to Him as His beloved children, we bring to Him now these petitions. That through devotion to the saints, the Church may grow in holiness and lead many more people to join the company in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our nation as Election Day draws near, and that the virtue of the saints will inspire the actions of those in civil government, as well as all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all health care workers, caregivers, and first responders, may they and their families be 
protected and strengthened by the love of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of those whom we are praying for on our parish prayer line, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homebound and shut in, that they will not succumb to loneliness and despair, but be drawn to Christ's presence in their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from addiction, mental illness, cancer, disease, and other ailments, may they find healing and comfort in the name of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to understand more clearly our universal call to holiness and find confidence in the love and mercy of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been called to the banquet of eternal life and for those who grieve for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Robert Riestad, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your great love for us, you gave us your only Son to save us, to nourish us, and to give us life eternal. But not only him, Lord, you gave all you gave to us all, all of your saints, all those holy men and women to be examples for us in our own lives so that we may know how to live our life so that we can one day be in your, uh, in your kingdom. And now we turn to you with these prayers and petitions spoken and unspoken in the signs of our hearts. And we ask you to make them your own through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice that you have. The praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ, 
our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with a multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his auxiliary, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. And mid us we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. From a distance, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My dear brothers and sisters, those of you who are live streaming the Mass, I encourage you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise of him is always in my mouth. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I have called you and you are mine. 
loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. Seek the face of the Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those of you who might have missed it, uh, this last week when we went over our annual parish report for the parish, uh, and though a copy of that report can be found at the entrances of the church when you leave, uh, so pick up a copy, and if you have any questions, please contact the parish and, uh, or one of the finance council members uh, if you have any questions about it. Uh, this Monday is All Souls Day, as we heard from Deacon Mike. And there will be, typically there's no Mass on Mondays, but there will be a Mass that evening at 6.30 p.m. and it will be open to the public. So if you want to come and uh, pray for your loved ones, please do come. Uh, You'll notice that the Book of the Dead is here in front in the sanctuary too. So feel free to come and write in the name of all your loved ones so so that we will all pray for them throughout the month of November. Uh, You'll also find that there won't be a pen there. So when you do come and write your... Uh, the the name of your loved one in the book bring your own pen or pencil Uh, just a reminder don't forget to check out uh, the CCW's virtual holiday boutique Uh, in just a couple of weeks they'll be uh, having the goods ready for pickup so make sure that you check out the boutique so you can pick up a good on that day And this coming Thursday, for those who are live streaming, our Thursday Mass will be at 8.45 a.m. and not 8 8 a.m. So this is the last week that we'll be doing that uh, for the uh, school kids. Uh, Friday Mass will still be at the normal time at 8.45 as well. uh, December 5th, the Red Cross will be coming for a blood drive from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. So please see the bulletin for details. Uh, just FYI, t- um, also make a note that they will not be accepting walk-ins. This is by appointment only. So for, those, for you, all of you, I know you, why you're here. And besides Jesus, that's good. That's a good start. But it's probably because some of you don't like to get up early in the morning. And so, thank God, because tomorrow, tonight, we're falling back. We're losing an hour. So for those of you watching at home, or if you know uh, those of you who... Uh, Well, just don't forget to change your clock. Your cell phones are usually pretty good about fixing itself, but uh, the wall clocks and any alarm clock, other alarm clocks you might have, make sure you fix that. Otherwise, you might be waking up earlier than you want. And as you heard in the petitions, please pray for peace this week, this coming week and the week, uh, the weeks to go. Uh, pray for a peaceful election and post-election process that our country and 
all the citizens here in our nation will be able to work together no matter who is chosen because we all live here and we need to make sure that we continue to build up the common good. And lastly, uh, at the, after Mass in the back, the handsome gentleman back there, Bob Altman, will be selling Booyah. So uh, this is a, a second chance for those of you who weren't able to gather because the Knights of Columbus earlier uh, this month uh, had a Booyah and it sold out within a couple hours. So they did another one today and they were, were able to bring back some for us here at the parish. So pick up a, uh, a quart for seven bucks. Two bucks comes, uh, two dollars of that seven dollars comes back to the parish. So thank you, Knights of Columbus. Have a wonderful evening. The Lord be with you. And with, with your you. spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. By all your saints still striving for all your saints at rest. Give you praise of